the San Diego Musculoskeletal Project. Today I'm going to discuss how to perform the knee physical examination. This is part four of a four-part series on the knee examination where we will review the provocative tests of the knee. To review the anatomy, inspection and palpation, and range of motion and strength portions of the knee exam, please view part one, part two, and part three of the knee exam series. These tests assess the integrity or stability of the knee joint by individually testing each structure. We will first test the medial and lateral collateral ligaments using the valgus and varus stress test. Collateral ligament damage can occur with a varus or valgus force to the knee. To test the integrity of the ligaments, we perform these maneuvers trying to feel for opening of the joint. In the valgus stress test, one hand pushes the knee medially while the other hand is pulling the ankle laterally. In the varus stress test, one hand pushes the knee laterally while the other hand is pulling the ankle medially. In absolute full knee extension where the knee is locked out and fully extended, it is difficult to perform these maneuvers due to the inherent bone knee stability of the knee in full extension. The knee should be flexed just slightly to unlock the knee and get a better feel for the competency of the MCL and LCL. The MCL is tested by pushing the knee medially and pulling the ankle laterally, creating a valgus stress. This is done again at 30 degrees flexion, which isolates the anterior bundle of the MCL. The LCL is tested by pushing the knee laterally and pulling the ankle medially, creating a varus stress. To test the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL, we will talk about the Lachman and anterior drawer tests. This slide shows the sensitivity and specificity of both tests. You can appreciate that the Lachman test has better sensitivity and specificity over the anterior drawer, and the reason for this is the angle with which the tests are performed. The Lachman test is performed with the knee in 30 degrees of flexion, which mimics the normal anatomic alignment of the ACL better. The anterior drawer is done at 90 degrees of flexion. To perform the Lachman test, the patient is supine. With one hand you stabilize the femur and with the other hand hold the proximal tibia with the knee at 30 degrees. Pull the proximal tibia forward to assess for laxity. The ACL should have a good endpoint where the tibia is not allowed to translate further anteriorly. The knee is flexed at 30 degrees. Stabilize the femur and pull the tibia anteriorly, feeling for an endpoint. If you have small hands or the patient's leg is large or heavy, you can perform the modified drop leg Lachman's test. Again, the patient is supine, but have them shift their position to the edge of the exam table. Drop the leg and place the ankle between your knees with the patient's knee flexed at 30 degrees. Use one hand to stabilize the femur and the other hand to pull the proximal tibia anterior. The knee is flexed at 30 degrees over the edge of the table. Place the ankle between the examiner's knees to stabilize. Then hold the femur with one hand while pulling the proximal tibia anteriorly with the other. While the Lachman is the preferred test, we will now discuss the anterior drawer test. The patient is supine with the knee flex 90 degrees. Sit on the foot and place the hands behind the proximal tibia. Place the thumbs along the joint line both medially and laterally. Pull the tibia forward and assess for anterior displacement of the tibia compared to the femur. The knee flexed at 90 degrees and the thumbs over the joint line pull the proximal tibia forward and assess for an end point. To test the posterior cruciate ligament, or PCL, we will use the posterior drawer test. The patient is supine with the knee flexed 90 degrees. Sit on the foot and place the hands on the proximal tibia. Place the thumbs along the joint line both medially and laterally. Push the tibia backward and assess for posterior displacement of the tibia compared to the femur. The knee flexed at 90 degrees and the thumbs over the joint line push the proximal tibia backward and assess for an end point. After completing the ligament tests, we move on to the meniscal tests. Besides joint line tenderness, there are two tests that can assess for meniscal tears, McMurray's and Apley's. As you can see, McMurray's test is not very sensitive, but it carries a very high specificity, indicating that when the test is done correctly and is positive, the patient likely has a meniscal tear. 
To perform the McMurray's test, hold the patient's knee with one hand with the hip and knee flexed at 45 degrees. The fingers are placed along the joint lines. With the other hand, cup the heel. Flex the knee, internally rotate the tibia and apply a valgus stress to test for the lateral meniscus. Flex the knee, externally rotate the tibia and apply a varus stress test for the medial meniscus. Continue back and forth like a pendulum to retest the medial and lateral menisci. Pain and a palpable click indicate meniscal damage. Extending the leg while it is rotated can help pick up posterior meniscal tears. The fingers are along the joint line. The heel is cupped in the other hand. Internally and externally rotate the tibia while feeling for a painful pop. You can add extension to try to catch a meniscal tear popping between the femur and tibia. To perform Apley's test, the patient is prone. Grasp the ankle and foot with both hands and gently flex the knee to 90 degrees. Push down gently while rotating the ankle back and forth. Pain along the joint line is a positive test. The patient is prone and the knee flexed to 90. Rotate the tibia back and forth to assess for pain in the joint line. This is a summary slide indicating the steps in performing the knee physical exam. This is an example of how to document the knee exam. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation on part 4 of the knee examination where we reviewed the provocative tests of the knee.